Well, a warm welcome to this talk. Now, in this video, I've got permission to show you some of the most amazing graphics uh, I've ever seen, actually, in, in the scientific biological domain, but certainly the best graphics I've seen in relation to COVID-19, spike protein, and the autoimmunity and damage that spike protein can cause. Now, I've been given permission to show you this by filmmaker Arki Tanksko. Now, this is his links here. So, um, they're at the top of the description, so please click onto his video. You'll be amazed. Do, do the like and put comments on it and all that kind of stuff. Let's get people viewing this video. The pathological effects of spike protein. DNA, RNA makes protein, makes this nasty spike protein that can cause all sorts of damage to the body. Um, he talks about the lipid nanoparticles. He talks about, well, well show, shows graphics of them. Uh, and, and mechanisms of autoimmunity. The film is very understated because, of course, we all have to be very careful. There's external people who don't want us to be able to express things quite as freely as we would like to. Um, so there's a dedicated website for this film here. Whole thing's incredibly, it's incredibly generous. It's, it's, it's all made available free. So we've got Ryan Cole, we've got a spike protein, Robert Redfield, um, we've got... Um, this lady here is, is um, Jessica Sutter, who men of a certain age might remember from Pussycat Dolls. Um, but uh, now, tragically, tragically, severely injured after COVID vaccine. Moving story. Do, do, do please give her the time. Click on the link and watch the whole video. I'm just going to show you a snippet. Um, and also on this video, uh, which is fantastic, it's almost like a scientific paper, you click on there and you've got all the sources. So you've got all the references. So um, not only is this really good science, it's also told in a very comprehensible way. I mean, I, I'm a teacher, I, I know it. It's, it's, this is well taught and brilliantly illustrated. Um, let's watch the clip now. inside my arm what's in my arm what's in my arm yo in this chapter let's break down the science using 3d visuals to show how the mrna vaccine works and explore its potential links to clotting and heart damage but first let's recognize that messenger rna isn't just a man-made invention in its natural form, it's a marvel within our bodies. Evolution has gifted life with the wonders of genetic coding, the blueprint of existence. In this grand symphony of life, messenger mRNA plays a vital part. The magnificent diversity of life stems from humble beginnings evolving over billions of years to attain its marvelous complexity. The journey from primitive beings to complex creatures would not have been possible without the genetic blueprint called DNA and the related molecule RNA. DNA holds all the instructions to maintain the body. These instructions are then copied from DNA into smaller snippets called messenger RNA, which are the to-do list for each cell. So you can think of DNA as the blueprint, and mRNA is the project manager bringing plans to life. We choose to go to the moon in this decade. During the space race of the 1950s and 60s, genetics research saw rapid progress including the discovery of messenger RNA in 1961. Today, scientists have figured out how to create a synthetic modified version of mRNA in the lab that is engineered to last longer and evade immune detection. Our cells mistake this lab-made mRNA as their own, and our body starts to create proteins for therapeutics or vaccines.
The modified mRNA vaccines are created on a computer in a lab without using a real virus. These genetic vaccines only required the genetic sequence of the coronavirus. We never had access to the physical virus to design the product. In the early stages of the pandemic, Chinese scientists released the genetic code of the coronavirus, sparking a global race to develop a vaccine. As soon as we get that sequence, let's plug it into mRNA. That's all I needed was the sequence. They used the genetic code provided by Chinese scientists as a backbone for their mRNA vaccine. The modified genetic code in the vaccine instructs our bodies to produce only a specific part of the coronavirus rather than the entire virus itself. Vaccine platforms are using what's called the spike protein of the coronavirus. The spike proteins are the tiny spikes on the surface of the virus. Once this mRNA code is injected into your body, it instructs your cells to make these coronavirus spikes. By creating these spikes in our body, our immune system should build immunity against this specific part of the virus. The worst mistake of all would be to take messenger RNA and then have a code for a lethal protein that was engineered in a Chinese biosecurity lab. That was a disaster. The mRNA technology is exceptionally complicated and unlike anything we have seen with standard vaccines. When people received their first COVID-19 vaccine, it was the first time their body received lipid nanoparticles. The mRNA vaccine dose is filled with tiny bubbles of fat called lipid nanoparticles. These fat bubbles protect the modified mRNA from degrading and help it enter cells. Once inside, the mRNA instructs the cells to produce a genetically engineered version of the spike protein. The lipid nanoparticles, when they attach to cells, then the lipid nanoparticles dump off their payload messenger RNA. The messenger RNA then is taken into the cytoplasm of the cell. It's read by ribosomes over and over and over again. The spike protein, which is a foreign protein, is expressed on the surface of cells The injection of mRNA vaccines turns our bodies into spike protein manufacturing sites. With every dose, a substantial amount of these modified spike proteins are created inside your body. The scientific community has stated that the spike protein created by the vaccine is harmless. Concerns have been raised about its potential to cause harm. A Yale preprint detected spike protein up to 709 days after vaccination in patients with post-vaccination syndrome. The code that they used is for the spike protein. Early on in the pandemic, we learned that the spike protein is the toxic part of this virus that causes clotting, that causes inflammation, that causes myocarditis, that causes brain fog. The spike protein directly causes blood clotting and is found in the middle of large blood clots. Researchers have concerns that the immune response triggered by mRNA vaccines could potentially lead to excessive attacks on our tissues and organs. And any cell that makes this foreign protein now becomes a target of your own immune cells to attack as well. 
those cells will be attacked immunologically as if they're infected with the virus. The immune system detects the presence of spikes and initiates the destruction of the infected cells. These cells become a target for our immune system to hunt and kill. It immediately evokes an autoimmune reaction in each and every cell that is expressed. Health officials have been cautious in acknowledging that these particles may have the potential to distribute beyond the injection site. If these particles enter the bloodstream, they may potentially increase risks. A widespread distribution could result in the production of spike protein in various organs. Lipid nanoparticles go everywhere in the body, as in everywhere. to the brain, to the bone marrow, to the liver, to the spleen, most importantly, to the reproductive organs, to the testes, to the ovaries. So lipid nanoparticles can't be controlled. Most of the lipids should stay in the shoulder, and they are designed to efficiently enter the deltoid muscle cells, but they can also be taken up by other cells in the body. So not only can the cells in your deltoid muscle be turned into spike production sites, but also cells in your heart muscle and organs. Current leading theories of mRNA vaccine-related cardiovascular problems include spike protein expression in tissues and molecular mimicry of the spike protein. Well, weren't those clips quite incredible and to the best of my knowledge uh, completely scientifically accurate i do plan on picking uh, um, on doing the science a bit more in the future but for now we'll just leave that as it is do click on it please um they've spent a lot of time and money on this film we need to get the viewers out there uh that's the links i put at the top of the description to the website for the film and the direct youtube link for the film i mean i certainly feel i understand it a lot better now having watched those amazing graphics um more to come but for now do watch the whole film you won't be disappointed much better than watching certain mainstream media outlets that could be mentioned but uh from now for now for me thank you for watching